Hey, hey everyone, this is Tara Lynn, the Painted Cicada, and welcome, welcome to Painting Spring, or Chasing Spring uh, Mixed Media Lesson. I am super excited to paint this with you guys. Um, this was something I just kind of came up with while I was playing, and I absolutely loved it. This one here, I did the edges in gold. Um, I was crazy about it, so I redid it. Um, as a butterfly, but to be honest, this hummingbird um, is my absolute favorite. But just to give you an idea, you can change um, whatever image you choose to do as your focus. So if a hummingbird is not your thing, you could definitely draw something else if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to focus on my hummingbird here because I absolutely love this guy. Um, so, uh, Let's go over the supply list and um, I'm going to take a few minutes just to um, talk about some substitutions because I want you to be comfortable um, knowing and understanding that with mixed media, you really can change this up in so many different ways. So um, I'm creating on a six by six canvas here. Of course, you can create on absolutely any size. Um, but I I like this little canvas block. This is kind of perfect for this design here. As far as acrylic paint, um, I recommended um, having warm colors, cool colors, teal, pans gray, and white. And I have just a, a huge variety, and you really can use just about anything. So when I say warm colors, I am talking about... Um, pinks, reds, oranges, yellows, everything on the warm side of the color color wheel, the color spectrum. So you can really kind of play with those colors. Um, let me get some yellow. Um, let's see, here's a nice bright yellow. Um, so I'm gonna just grab a couple of those. And then cool colors are shades of green, blue and purple and there's no right or wrong what colors you choose choose colors that you know and love um you can also mix colors let's see in the purple um so just uh depending on what you have available um i recommend just a little bit of everything and then um i really accentuated my painting um, with teal, Payne's Gray, which I like to use Payne's Gray sometimes instead of black. It's just a really good um, neutral color. What are you, Payne's Gray? Here you are. So Payne's Gray is kind of um, like a navy blue, but it's really dark. So it's kind of like a black, um, a substitute for black, and then white, which I use for almost every painting. All right, so those are all my colors. Again, just grab a few different colors that you have um, and we'll have some fun. Um, the next thing is, oops, I don't drop my supplies, um, a black Sharpie. It doesn't matter if it's thin, if it's this size, if it's thicker. Um, we're going to do some writing. And then isopropyl alcohol. Um, it doesn't matter what percentage. So um, if you, anything you've got in your medicine cabinet is fine. If you went out and bought some, that's awesome. I typically use 90% when I'm working with alcohol ink, so I do have it. Um, if you don't have isopropyl alcohol, um, so sometimes people will have these little alcohol prep pads. If you have those in your medicine cabinet, you can use one of those. Um, if you don't have the alcohol, don't stress about it. Um, I'm using the black Sharpie to, um, we're going to, um, do some writing on our canvas to start with. So if you don't have the Sharpie and the isopropyl alcohol, um, you could just use a pen. You could use, um, a water soluble ink. You could use, um, India ink pens, um, really gel pens, anything you want. Uh, the next uh, thing on here is acrylic paint pens or Posca pens. So I've got some acrylic paint pens here to use and those are for doodling. Um, then I recommended gel pens. 
So I have a selection of gel pens and you'll see some of these are just, um, you know, regular pens, right? You know, from the, the um, office supply store. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a gel pen made for art. Um, we're just going to do some drawing and um, sketchy lines with that. Um, the next thing is a milk bottle top to stamp. So it doesn't have to necessarily be from a milk bottle, but what I wanted was just some round um, items that I could put in my paint and stamp. And I like to keep a variety of shapes and I just have a little bag here that I like to use for mixed media. Um, so we'll be using those. Um, and then all the obvious supplies like water, paper towels, uh, paint palettes to put your paint on, um, a plate to, um, if you don't have a paint palette, and then uh, paint brushes in various sizes. So I just typically use flats and rounds, and I have a variety of those to use. Um, a heat gun or hair dryer is always handy to speed up uh, the creating process. So um, if you don't have one of those, what you wanna do is just um, on steps where I'm drying, you're just gonna wanna give yourself a few minutes and let your, your paint dry and then come back. And then I do have a tracer available right here. And um, I will also draw um, and walk through the transfer process when, it's, when we get to that step. So um, I have the tracer set up to work with a six by six canvas, but you can um, probably use your printer settings and enlarge this or make it smaller as well, just depending on what you are creating on. So that is a big supply list, but most of um, what we have here can be substituted. So if you don't have paint pens, you can just use paint and a paintbrush. Um, if you don't have gel pens, um, you could substitute with, um, crayons with oil pastels. You could use Sharpies. I mean, we really can change a lot of this up and come up with a similar result at the end. So no stress, have fun. Um, think about using your materials in a new and different way. And I'm sure we can get to the same end point um, with our design. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got my six by six here and I'm gonna move this guy off to the side just so I have more room um, in front of me since I've got him up in the corner. And this is where I'm gonna use my Sharpie. So what I want to do um, is just take a moment and um, I'm gonna start writing on my page or on my canvas. And uh, since my lesson is called Chasing Spring, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and write what I'm excited for um, with spring coming here um, in Ohio in the United States. It's just about spring. Um, if you are um, across the globe and have a different season, um, you could write why you miss spring. Um, honestly, it really doesn't matter what you're writing. We're just going to create some texture on the background here, but I'm going to take a few minutes and just um, scribble write my thoughts about spring.
So take a moment and finish your writing. What I'm gonna do now is get my alcohol and I'm gonna mess this up, I'm gonna smudge this. So this is my isopropyl alcohol in this little bottle here. Um, and I'm just gonna put, I don't know, maybe five or six drops around this background. I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm just gonna smudge this around. And I might do that one more time. Sometimes, um, especially if your alcohol content is a lower percentage, like 70%, um, you might need to let it sit for a moment. This time I'm just going to let it drip and smudge this way. So you can see that the alcohol lifts the ink and that's kind of what I'm going for is I just want this to be kind of messy. See, ooh, it starts dripping. I love that. Now, isopropyl alcohol will dry fairly quickly. So um, once you get your, your first layer here the way that you like it, um, what you're going to want to do is just let it dry. And you can blow on it. Um, if you've got the hair dryer, now's a good time to get that out and zap it. Um, whatever you want to do to get this dry. And it should just take you a moment. All right, one more step with this Sharpie. Um, and really, you could do it with a Sharpie or you could do it with a pencil. I am going to um, draw some circles and I'm going to start in the center of my canvas. And I'm just going to draw these circles kind of radiating out. And it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just sketching up some lines there. All right, and this is where we're going to start to play with our paint. All right, so I'm going to start with my uh, warm colors. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of each warm color on my palette here. I've got orange. This is... Alizarin and Crimson. This is Clinacridone Magenta. And Cadmium Yellow. And then I am going to get some white. I'm going to put the white off to the side, but we are going to use quite a bit of white in this lesson today. Alrighty. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize, um, actually, I don't even need to visualize it. I can draw it. I'm going to cut my canvas in half sideways. And on the top right, we're going to add in some warm colors and on the bottom left, we're going to add in cool colors. So the first thing I'm going to do, so I've got these lines here, um, is I'm going to add in my pure color and I'm just going to start 
on the circles that I made as kind of a guide of where to put these brush strokes. So this way, I've got them kind of radiating out and I don't have to, you know, completely cover this background. Some of these colors are gonna be more transparent than others. Embrace that, okay? We want to see the texture and the words and the fun stuff coming through. So I started with orange. Now I'm gonna add some red. Get my alizarin crimson. And I'm just making kind of single brush strokes on these lines here. And the brush strokes can be different sizes. We're just filling in space and we're leaving gaps. Don't forget to go off the side of your canvas. Now I'm gonna dip into my yellow. And I didn't even, I'm not even washing my brush. I'm just kind of wiping it off here. All right, and don't overthink it. As you can see, I just kind of went for it. Everything is not evenly spaced and perfect. It's just on there, okay? Um, now I'm gonna dip into some white and I'm gonna mix each color with a little bit of white. I don't wanna go pastel. I just wanna change the tone a little bit here. We're just adding some variation. So from these four colors that I started with, um, we're going to get kind of just four more colors and don't stress about them. Just see what you come up with. Again, don't go pastel. We still want a pretty saturated palette here. And I'm just adding some brush strokes in these extra colors. All right, so that is our warm side of the canvas. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my cool colors. So if you're not quite here yet, um, go ahead and finish that part. And I'm gonna pull out my cool colors. So um, on the cool end of the spectrum, I've got this um, aqua green. This is just a nice bright blue, cerulean blue. I've got a uh, brilliant purple, which is just a light purple, kind of like a lilac color, and I've got dioxazine purple. And this is definitely a time for you to pull out your favorite colors, right? I tend to lean towards teals and purples um, and magentas. Um, so I made sure that I included those in this lesson, but again, I'm going to do the same thing, um, on the opposite side of the canvas. So I'm just going to add some of these warm colors, or I'm sorry, some of these cool colors over here. Again, just starting on these lines that I made to help me keep things organized. And the beautiful thing about having this sketchy background is you can kind of you know, you can use these lines and they're just going to enhance your, your piece here. And there's no right or wrong, just have fun. Don't overthink this.
Switching to my light purple. Remember, I don't want to go too pastel. So this light purple is as pastel as I'm going to get on this layer here. Isn't that fun? This is kind of beautiful as is. It's really kind of a fun play with color. Um, and then on this uh, cool side, if you want to go back through and lighten some of these colors up, you certainly can, just like we did um, on the other side. A lot of my cool colors were already on the lighter end, so I'm not going to do too much of that, but it really is going to depend on the paints that you're using, the colors that you use, right? All right, now is the first point at which we either need to completely dry this or take a breather and let it dry on its own, so I'm going to mute and zap it with my heat gun, um, and then the in the next step, we're going to transfer or draw our um, hummingbird image. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for now as I walk you through the hummingbird here. Um, so if you have the tracer available, um, this is the hummingbird that I drew. Um, you should be able to, if you've got um, carbon paper, what you would do is you would take your canvas and then you would put the carbon paper in between and it always goes shiny side down. And then you would put your image on top and then you would go ahead and draw it. Um, what I'm going to do for those of you who are, cannot uh, print the tracer is I'm going to guide you through drawing this hummingbird. And the reason why I'm not going to draw it on my canvas is because right now this is so busy. If I drew on here with a pen, um, you wouldn't really be able to see it. So um, if you're drawing along with me, I'm just going to flip this over. Um, you can go ahead. I actually kind of encourage you if you're sketching to sketch on a separate piece of paper and then transfer it if that's an option um, versus drawing it on your canvas because it may be difficult to see and it may be difficult to erase. But you have to work with what you've got, right? Um, another way to transfer if you don't have transfer paper and um, this, again, you're going to have to be um, kind of heavy handed with it is you could either scribble with pencil or crayon on the back of your drawing and then trace it like you've got transfer paper in between. But anyway, let's draw this hummingbird. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do to draw this 
is I'm going to start with the, the shape of the body. Okay. So the first thing to draw Mr. Hummingbird here is we're going to create a teardrop shape. Most sketching and drawing, um, we just need to break it down into various shapes. So we start with kind of an upside down teardrop. And of course you can do it in whatever direction you're painting your hummingbird. And then at the top of the teardrop, we're going to overlap a small circle. So hummingbirds have really small heads. So we've got the teardrop shape. And we're going to paint this. Um, so it's okay. Or we're going to paint around it. So it's okay if you kind of have to sketch this first and then transfer it. So uh, upside down teardrop, and then we're going to put a small head up here on the end. And then of course, hummingbirds have that long, thin hummingbird beak. And then we'll want to give this guy a tail. So the basic shape for the tail is going to be a triangle. You'll see I'm just going to kind of overlap the bottom of the body here. So we're going to go in with the triangle and then um, down at the base, we're just going to kind of add some wavy lines and that turns that into a tail. Okay. And then for the wings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my two lines for uh, the angle that I want my wings. So this is going to be my first wing and this is going to be my second wing. So the farther away of the two wings is going to be underneath. So I'm going to do that one first. So what I do is it's again, it's kind of a triangle shape. So visualize that and we're just going to connect the top by again, creating kind of this wavy wing right there. And this is gonna be my back wing. And then up here again, um, we're gonna visualize that angle and then kind of just create a wave to connect that. And this is my top wing. All right, now what we need to transfer is really just gonna be the outline of this shape. So I've got my paper here and I'm going to use my carbon paper just so that it's nice and dark for me. Since I'm working on camera here, this helps it to be a little bit easier to see. So I've got my canvas. I put my, my transfer paper shiny side down. Again, if you don't have transfer paper, you can scribble on the back of your sketch with a crayon, um, a wax crayon, or a pencil. And then I'm just going to kind of line this up where I want it to be on my canvas. And I'm going to trace the outline. I am going to follow that wing shape down a little bit, but I'm going to try elsewhere to pretty much just stick to the outline and where my shapes meet um, that I didn't adjust in the sketch. I just might curve those a little bit so that they're not such sharp shapes, but you can adjust your Hummingbird, however it makes sense for you. All right, now this is going to be difficult for you to see um, on camera. So what I'm going to do, and you do not have to do this, but I'm going to do uh, my outline in black just so maybe you can see it a little better on camera. But here in the next step, it's not really going to be all that important anyway because we're going to paint around it.
All right, so you can choose to outline this. That wasn't really part of the step, but I wanted you to be able to see kind of what I'm working with here. So there's my basic hummingbird shape. All right, now what I'm gonna do for this next step, and you have to kind of be free and loose about this, is we're gonna add another coat of paint uh, over the top here, and uh, we're gonna go kind of light with it, and we're gonna smudge, and we're gonna kind of do some fun things, okay? So um, I'm gonna go back into these warm colors, and I'm gonna start on this side here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dip my brush in the white, and then in a little bit of that warm color. So I started off with my alizarin crimson, and I'm just gonna kind of get messy and smudge in some of that color over here. And I'm gonna repeat this process. I want this to be um, kind of messy and light and free. And I'm just smudging. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right up to this outline, but I'm not gonna go inside the outline. So I'm gonna paint around all the edges of this pretty little hummingbird here, but I am not going to, um, Across the edge and you can even kind of get a little messy with it you can smudge with your finger you can thin it down with a little bit of water um, but the idea here is we're just going to create kind of another layer some of which can be transparent some of which can be pastel like up here in the corner I just added some water and you can kind of see through that so just play as we add on these warm colors and have a good time with it. Now we don't want to completely hide every bit and piece of that background um, because that's pretty. So I'm going to move and smudge some of those. See again right here I'm getting up to that outline and I'm just going to Make sure I don't cross it. So I'm lightening my colors by using that white. I'm thinning them out a bit. And I'm going to focus, now that I've got some color down, um, I'm going to focus on adding some more of this uh, quinacridone magenta and white. I'm going to lighten this up quite a bit with my white. And um, I'm going to start filling in some of this outline. I really like pink, so I'm going to add quite a bit of pink in here. My red, when I add white to that, makes a different pink. So again, I'm just going to play with that a little bit. And I'm just feeling, starting to fill in this space that's all around this hummingbird without going over that outline. Great, so I started doing that with my cool colors. Now I'm gonna do the same with my warm colors. Um, again, I'm gonna dip into the color and then dip into the white and really just kind of 
spread some of this color around. And where my warm colors and my cool colors meet, it's absolutely okay um, to get some overlap and to make sure, you know, some of that is blending. But really here, guys, I'm just playing with the, the way that I'm applying this paint. And the key with this is we really are kind of masking off that shape that we made with the hummingbird. So as long as you don't lose that shape, you can apply color all around the edges. Oops. And what I'm going to do is where these two sides meet um, after I get these colors kind of where I want them to be and my, my outline a little more clear um, is I am going to uh, blend some of those colors so that they are friendly to each other. Let me give you an example of that. Um, so up here, you know, blue and orange, those colors, they don't mix well. They don't really play well together. And so, um, what I'm going to do is in areas where blue and orange meet, blue and orange don't play well together, but yellow, uh, blends nicely with blue and yellow will blend nicely with orange. So I'm going to lighten up this yellow just a bit. And then where my blue and orange meet, I can kind of add a little bit of yellow and blend that out. And so where it blends with the blue, it's going to have a nice green color. And where it blends with that orange, it's going to be a little more friendly. So don't be afraid to do that as well. And over here, I've got orange and green. Those don't play really well together. Um, but I can add a smidge of yellow in there. Yellow is kind of my harmonizing color. So right in here, I can just add a little bit of yellow, can blend it. My green is still wet, so I can kind of blend it right into there. And then over on this side, I can blend it out into orange and it just kind of creates that, um, that fun blending effect. So this is what I have so far. Now you'll see I still have some things peeking through the background, um, more so over here on my warm side, and that's fine. Um, it's kind of up to you. If you need more coverage, you can always, you know, go through with another little layer color here and there. All right, so we are getting a little bit closer, but we're not quite there yet, okay? 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some white to accentuate the outline. So I'm going to get a smaller brush this time and I'm going to dip right into my white. And what I'm going to do is go around some parts of my outline. So right up here, I added some white next to that uh, wing. I'm going to wipe off my brush and then come back here and just kind of blend it out. So it gives just kind of a highlight right next to that wing. All right. And I'm not going to do this around the whole outline, uh, but I may do this uh, around parts that kind of feel a little lost. So maybe down here, I'll add a little bit of that white on the outside, wipe off my brush, and then just smudge it out while it's wet. If none of your uh, outline feels lost and you don't know where to put it, just, you know, add a little bit, skip some area, and add a little more. There's no right or wrong. You can add as much or as little highlight as you want. But I just do it a little at a time and kind of feel it out. And it makes a subtle difference, but you can see I've added a little highlight here next to that outline. I've added just a little bit here. I might go back and just add a little more. Got a little bit here, I like that, and a little bit up here around the crown. All right, so that's just a little highlight. That's kind of fun. What I'm going to do now is get my paints gray. And I'm going to add a little, um, a little outline. Now you can always already, I'm sorry, kind of slurring my words here. You can already see my outline because I went over it with black. But what I'm going to do is get Payne's Gray. I added a little water to it because I want it to be nice and fluid. Um, so I get thin lines. And um, if you don't like the darkness of the Payne's Gray, you can add a smidge of white to it. But I would encourage you not to lighten it too much because you don't want to lose that outline. Um, so I am just going to go over parts of this outline that I want to really kind of stick out here. So I'm going to go over this wing where the wing comes into the bird. So if you've painted over any sections of this outline and you need to just reinforce it. That's what this Payne's Gray is going to do for you. You don't have to outline the whole bird. But you can kind of darken or reinforce any of those areas that you lost while we were smudging and painting. And then the last thing I'm going to do, you can do this with Payne's Gray, or I've got this nice dark dioxazine purple, is I'm just going to add a little eye up here on my hummingbird.
All right. Sorry, when I left my my little hummingbird guy up, it, it plays with my focus a little bit. All right. Now we're going to do a little bit of stamping. So I've got this little milk cap here. And I'm going to play with my paints again. So I'm going to dip in white. I've just got a flat brush. Um, let's see. And I'm going to dip in orange. I'm going to make a nice pastel color. And I'm just going to paint some of that on my little cap here. And then I'm going to press it on to my canvas. And this is subtle. But I'm just going to add circles here and there. So I added two in orange. And a lot of this... Um, you know, like I said, it's subtle. It's not meant to pop. It's meant to add texture. So I'm just going to play with what the placement a little bit here. And it's okay if you put a little bit of that warm color on the cool side and a little bit of the cool side on the warm side. Um, we're just playing. But for the most part, I'm using pastels for this, but that's not a rule. You could totally change how you do this. You could also change your shape. So if you have more than one cap, you could certainly, um, you know, play with the stamps here a little bit. We just want some subtle marks. So some of these you can barely even see. Like I got one here um, that the eye picks up on it, but it's not real bright. So um, I've got about probably 10 or 12 stamps on here. Don't be afraid to go crazy. Um, have fun with it. All right, now I'm going to pull out my darker teal, um, not to be confused with this aqua that I had. And let's see, I'm just going to get a little bit of that. We're just going to add a little shading inside this hummingbird. So I'm actually, mine is still kind of light. I'm going to add a smid smidge of Payne's Gray to this just to darken it a little bit. You can use whatever color you'd like. So I'm going to wipe off my, my brush here so that it's kind of a dry brush technique. And I'm just going to come through and add just a little bit of that blue inside my bird. So I add a little bit on both sides of the tail and smudge it in. And add a little bit on the belly. Kind of smudge that in. I'm going to add a little bit under the first wing on top of that second wing and then smudge that out. And this is a good time too, if you feel like there's too much emptiness inside your bird, you can also go back and do this in another color. So, you know, if I wanted to add a little more pink in here, I could do that kind of fill up some of that white. We're kind of just touching up some, some colors and shapes inside the bird. Remember that this was part of our first layer, so we do want these colors to be a little bolder. But there's no right or wrong.
All right, now I'm going to completely dry this bird and we're going to move on to the next step. All right, the reason why uh, we want this completely dry before we move on to the next step is because um, I'm gonna add a little bit of doodling with my gel pens. So um, what I'm gonna do, uh, first thing is I'm gonna start out with a white and I'm gonna create just kind of a sketchy tree shape here in the background. And I'm holding my brush, or I'm sorry, I'm holding my gel pen um, up towards the end so that I don't have as much control and I'm just gonna go, let's see, kind of and I'm gonna let this just branch out. And again, it's sketchy. So um, I just want it to look a little bit like a tree, but it doesn't need to be perfect. You know, if the lines break or you lose bits and pieces of it, that is absolutely fine. Um, if some areas are, are lighter than others, don't stress about it. That's what we want. Let me lift so you can see this up on camera. So this is what I just did. These lines here I did with a gel pen. Um, also, on my original, I gave this guy a little crown. I did that with a gold gel pen, so I just am going to kind of draw that in there. So that's kind of fun to give him a little crown. Certainly, you don't have to do that. You know, you can draw whatever, draw and doodle whatever you'd like. Um, and then down here... I have on my original a little leaf that I did with gel pen. And this is kind of where you just have fun and, and be free. You know, you don't have to sketch the same things that I do. Although you certainly can. But here's another leaf over here. And then I'm going to come through with um, some finishing touches. I'm pretty much done at this point. And this is where I'm going to add finishing touches with um, my Posca pens and a little bit of paint. So um, maybe I'll dip in here to some of this purple, lighten it up, you know, and maybe I'll just add some marks, you know, some paint some paint marks. Again, this, I know this is hard to see on camera, but I just, you know, kind of add some squares over here in purple. Maybe on the other side, I will add some marks in yellow. And this is just where we doodle and have fun. I'm gonna grab my paint pen. Maybe just add some lines. Add some lines over here. Repeating elements is a really um, helpful and important part of 
painting. So what, you know, usually what I'll do um, once I do multiple times, just so um, there's repetition in my pieces. But as you're doing this, you know, choose your colors and your paint pens based on what you have here in your background. And there's no right or wrong here. You can just play and have a good time until you get it where you like it. So now I've got white. I'm just adding maybe a white line around some of these parts of the wing. If you were feeling really froggy, you could even add in some stenciling. Um, this is where you really get to make it your own. So I've just added little bits and pieces and whimsical dots and dashes and lines. Um, and I'm really happy with this piece. And right now, the only thing left that I'm going to do is paint the edges. And I absolutely love painting my edges gold. Um, and I'll show you a trick for gold. Um, if you want to make a nice bright gold edge, um, what you would want to do, um, I'm going to get some yellow and a little bit of purple. And what the purple is going to do is tone down this yellow. It's going to turn it into like a brownish color. So you see I've got this like brownish yellow here. I'm going to do my first coat in this, like, it's like an antique yellow. It's, it's dingy, right? I'm going to do my first coat around all my edges with this color. And then I'm going to put the gold on top of it. And it's really going to pop. But of course you can do your edges in whatever color you like. So I'm doing gold. You can do whatever color matches. You can do black. You can do, I wouldn't do white just because then it looks unfinished. Um, but whatever color speaks to you. And this first layer, because I'm putting gold over, it doesn't really have to be all that thick. It can be kind of thin. And since my mixed media is a little kind of, um, I don't want to say sloppy, sloppy um, but whimsical, it's okay if some of that shows over the edge. So I'm going to do all four sides of this.
All right, and this is my gold. I absolutely love golden um, iridescent gold deep. And so I'm just going to apply this right around the edges. And you'll see how this yellow as a base layer really makes this pop. And when I do this final coat, I kind of brush it up towards my painting. And that way, if um, the gold peaks over the edge, it creates kind of a pretty little, pretty little gold edge here. But see how that gold, you can't even tell I did that base layer, right? See the difference? Isn't that fun? It really, really pops. Now I'm just adding a little bit of that gold feathering touch around the edges, just slightly brushing it up. It can barely be seen on the front of the canvas, but it's just kind of a fun little, fun little thing. And then I'm just going to add a little sparkle in the eye with a white paint pen. And that is it. That's all I have for you. Oh, sorry about my puppies barking. They wanted to say hello. Um, don't forget to share your work with me. Um, I would love to see it in the Painted Cicadas Art and Share um, on Facebook. There is the address. Or as always, you can tag me at Painted Cicada. I cannot wait to see all your versions.